G'day viewers, I've got Train Sim World 5 and I want to configure my rail driver because you need to calibrate it for every game you're going to use it in or it just does silly stuff. So to do that we go into the settings menu from the first menu you come into, you can pick up settings from pretty much anywhere. Then we're going to come down here into the controls menu, click on that. Then we're going to go to advanced controls in the controls menu and click on that. And you can see that it's detected the rail driver but it's not calibrated. And if you try and use it when it's not calibrated, then it does all sorts of weird stuff. It doesn't really do what you want. Now I do notice something interesting that there's side arrows up here now, which kind of suggests maybe there's some other controller coming. Hmm, interesting. But for now it's only rail driver. You'll also only see the locomotives from the training center. Don't be concerned about that. That's just the DLC manager. If you crank up a route and then come in here, you'll see the stuff in the training center and whatever's loaded in for your route. Alrighty, so let's get on with calibrating this thing, shall we? All we have to do is come down here and we can either click on calibrate or we can go E for calibrate. So we'll just click on it. And the first thing it wants us to do is the reverser. We will move that to the full reverse position. Take your finger off it and click accept over here. Then we want to go to the neutral position, so we'll do that, take our finger off and click accept. Now we want to go to the full reverse, or forward position, sorry, and uh, click accept. And we finished with that one. I usually center or move it to whatever its neutral thing is for each of the controls, because they do affect each other a little bit. Now we're going to do the throttle now, so that's this lever here. And we're going to bring that to the full throttle position. Now this one's a bit tricky too, so you've got to watch it. So we've got the full throttle. Now we come back to throttle idle. I always do that right at the start of the notch rather than pushing it over into the side like it sort of suggests. This seems to work better. And I'll click accept. And you'll notice it now wants to go all the way up to full dynamic braking. Or full braking if you're using the combined brake handle. Anyway, we'll accept that. And then we come back to the middle one. And again, I don't go into the notch in the middle. I just bring it back to the edge there. It kind of suggests you want to go over into the notch like this. But I find it never sits there anyway. So I just bring it back to the edge and then accept. All right, now we're going to do the brake handle. So the brake can be a little bit finicky. Mine's been okay lately. So I, I don't tend to take my other advice. But if you find your brake's not releasing completely, when you calibrate it, just move it up just a little bit before you calibrate, and then you'll find it always releases. So mine's been pretty good. It's usually only in summer it, it plays funny buggers, so uh, I recalibrate in summer. All right, so let's accept the release position. Move it all the way up to handle off or continuous services it is on mine, and click the accept position, and then push it over to detent into emergency and click accept, and bring that back down to the bottom here again. You'll notice on my independent brake. I've got these foam strips in it. Uh, they help it now that it's used for uh, the steam engine throttle. So let's we're already down on the edge. Let's click accept and then push it over to the right for bail off. Push it all the way up for fully applied and over to the right for fully applied and bail off. I always wondered about that because it you know fully applied and bailed off doesn't make sense really because bailing off is the independent brake. All right, we're going to do the wiper selector now. So we'll move that fully to the left and accept it, then to the middle position and accept it, and then all the way to the right and accept it. We'll now do the lights. So we'll all the way to the left and accept it, middle position and accept it, all the way to the right and accept it. Well, we're done there. So our rail driver is now calibrated and we can use it to drive. And that's all you need to do. So if you've got any questions about using rail driver in the game, it is a little bit finicky. It's a little bit different for each locomotive. So if, for example, your throttle doesn't work, try the independent brake instead. Um, there are a couple of trains that actually use the reverser as a throttle. And it, it comes from the various generations of experimentation or trying to see what's useful. So the, using the independent brake as a throttle is actually really good on steam engines because this throttle's a bit weird and this is a little bit less weird. So it actually works quite well. Anyway, that's about all I had to show you for Rail Driver. Apart from coming out again, you just come back out through all of the menus as usual. There you go. That's it. And of course, as always, we finish with Cat. Bye now.
We played a game.